Hey there, hey Swiss Army. I'm Swazina and welcome back to Swazina Says. Now, as always, I ask that you like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Always feel free to comment below. If you want to send in letters to me, you can send them to Swazina Says, P.O. Box 583, North Hollywood, California, 91603. Or you can hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Now let's get this thing started. Come through Swiss Army. Now the Swiss Army soldier that I'll be shouting out to today is named Gerald Dewey. Gerald Dewey is an actor who can be seen on multiple media platforms, from commercials to independent film to web series. He has a National True Value commercial out now that is in heavy rotation, as well as a role on the hit web series, Stepford Side Chicks. Gerald Dewey is utterly intriguing on screen. So believe me when I say you need to entertain yourself by watching you some Gerald Dewey. Might I add, I do believe he is one of the best doing it today. So go get you some Gerald Dewey. <laughs> Come through red carpet. The red carpet member that I'll be shouting out to today is Jalen D. Bledsoe. Jalen D. Bledsoe is an amazing entrepreneur, motivational speaker, technical prodigy who began at the tender age of 12. He began marketing his technology services and within two years he had 150 contractors working for him. The scope of services his company provides are vast. His clients that work with him include Jordan Sparks and Steve Harvey. I mean, this young man is unstoppable. And Jalen, we see you. And the Swiss Army supports you. Good job, Jalen. I think somebody trying to tell me about it. So we're sitting here with Gerald Dewey. I know y'all recognize his face. He's <laughs> always on your television. So you get used to it. Isn't it a cute face? Look at him go. Aww, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> thank, you. thank you for coming on the show. I am glad to be here. So are you ready to see what they want to tell us about? I am. All right, let's do it. Nervous. <laughs> are you? <laughs> I am. I am. It, it'll do that to you sometimes. It yeah. will definitely do that to you. All right, first one. You can okay. do this. All right, all right. Hey, Swazina. Hey. Is there a polite way to tell a close friend that they get on your nerves. I don't want to be rude, but I want my friend to stop complaining about the same issues over and over. Then, when they ask for advice and you give it to them, they do the exact opposite. And now we're complaining all over again. Hence, getting on my nerves. Sign, help before I lose it. So, is there a nice way <laughs> to say that you're getting on my nerves? Kinda, but uh, it won't work. Oh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so if you say you're getting on my nerves nicely, they're going to probably still get on your nerves. Uh, so, unfortunately, you might have to just break down and be like, hey, you're repeating yourself. And uh, <laughs> I didn't answer this 17 times, so unfortunately, I'm not going to give you the same answer again. I'm just going to say, ignore. Oh, so you're just going to ignore your friend all the Is that where... We're... Yeah, I'm just going to ignore it. it. Just go for ignore and see if that gets you a different response. Okay, well, I get that, I get that. I'm not an ignorer, I am a communicator. Yes. So I am- Which is why she has a show. Th thank you very much. So for me, I am a communicator, so I would literally, my thing would be, if it sounds like it's the same issue though. Mm -hmm. Like they're getting on your nerves with the same issue, not necessarily you're just getting on my nerves as my friend. So that's kind of two different things. So if you're getting on my nerves because you keep asking me the same questions or you see, keep going through the same issues and I'm giving you the advice, then my next response is the last time that you asked me that, I told you this and you didn't do it and I'm not going to continue to have the conversation with you. Right, right. Like I'm right. literally going to say to you, it's driving me up a wall and down the other side. So unless you want me to talk completely crazy mm -hmm. to you, and I don't think that's the best thing because you're already going through something, I'm no longer that person. Yeah. I'm just not that person for that issue. 
It's just like uh, the definition of insanity, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You do one thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome, and then you become insane. You are actually, your friend's insane, and your friend is making you insane. Driving you insane. Driving you crazy. And it sounds like in a car that you don't want to be in. Right. You don't have to get in that hoopty. You don't. <laughs> You Let that hoopty go. Let that hoopty go. It's a limit. Okay, baby. Because if you get in the hoopty, it ain't going to get you far. Look at that. Look what I did there. All right. <laughs> Let's move on to the next letter. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> good job. Let's see how this one goes. All right. You're a little bit more comfortable now? I'm more comfortable now. All right, good. All right. Let's see what we got. OMGZ, guys. This is like blood stain. <laughs> Look how long... <laughs> This letter is. Goodness. Okay, here we go. All right, here we go. So I'm going to challenge you to pay attention because it's, clearly it's a lot in yeah. here. We're going to have to listen real intensely. Right, and it says, Swazina, Swazina, Swazina. Mm, mm, mm. That's the first ever. Well, hopefully good things come in threes. Okay, let's see how it goes. I have been married for three years. <laughs> Look at there. It's starting out good. One year into our, mar into our marriage, my husband confessed he had a one-time fling. There that good thing went. Well, that yeah. theory got shot. He said he confessed because he felt hor horrible about it, and even more horrible that he was keeping it from me. I didn't even suspect a thing. I guess he thought he was good, LOL. I don't know why that's funny. <laughs> he did say that he strayed at the time because I didn't make him feel valued as a husband, and I wasn't doing my fair share. In the past two years, I will admit that he has done a lot to try to make up for it. He's doubled his salary. Mm. He comes home and cleans house and cooks. He's constantly asking if there's anything that I need. I can kind of tell that he's really contrite, but here's the thing, I don't care. He cheated on me. Now I'm at the point where I want a divorce because I just can't deal with him any longer. But since he's the breadwinner, I can't just leave him now. So what I plan to do is stay in the relationship and act like everything is fine, but on the side, girl, but on the side, I'm going to start looking for someone else with the means <laughs> to support my needs. Oh my I God. know I'm a diva, lol. I don't know why that's funny. Okay, when I find that guy, I will file divorce papers. So do you think I'm doing the right thing? I mean, he did cheat, so I think he deserves what I'm going to do. Do you think I'm doing the right thing? You asked me that twice. Is that it? That's it. This is huge. Oh my God. Um, are you doing the right thing by dating while you're married? <laughs> is, that, is that the question? I think, that's, I think that's the question. I think the question is, is she doing the right thing by dating while she's married to find someone to replace the husband that is trying to do better? <sighs> This is like, this is a letter filled with foul. Like, it's just so, it's terrible. Okay, so let's start from the beginning, okay? So um, you're married, and you have a husband, and he cheated on you and felt bad and told you about it. Now, okay, husband, you were wrong. Agreed. You were wrong. You should have never cheated, you know, and she obviously didn't know about it, so apparently it was eating at your soul, which it probably would because you cheated on your wife. That sucks, but does that justify you dating somebody while you're married to him, while he asks for forgiveness? I don't think so. Uh, I went through marriage counseling, and it was tough to have a conversation like, if your wife cheats on you, are you willing to stay with your wife? Because marriage is death do you part. So if you take those vows as serious and accept the challenge to overcome that hurdle, then I would say you would need to stay with your husband, especially if he is asking for your forgiveness, is pleading for your forgiveness. He's trying to overcompensate for everything. And yeah, it's a big it's a big no no as far as cheating, you know, as it's huge. Is that the end all be all? Is that well is that a deal breaker? Maybe not. Maybe it is. Maybe it, maybe it is. Maybe, maybe it is. Let me just jump in real quick. Let me let me jump in real quick. Yeah, go ahead. This uh, is huge. This, this is Because this is, this, is, this is foolish is what this is. This letter, this whole piece <laughs> of paper is foolish. And the reason why it's Ooh. foolish is because it sounds like there were conversations that happened 
where he said, I'm going to do better, and you agree to it. And then you're telling me that he's doing better. That's yeah. my issue with you. My issue with you is that you're telling me that this man is doing better. And if he's, he's saying that you didn't value him as a husband. Okay, so let's talk about two things. Husband, you should have had this conversation before you cheated. Let's get that out the way. Because that could have been avoided. If she didn't value you as a husband, then clearly there's some things that maybe you felt like you weren't doing, some things that she felt like you weren't doing. Because then after that, she says, you've doubled your salary. You come home, you cook, you clean. So maybe the, the responsibility wasn't shared in that way. Mm. So you started doing some things to fix it. But he said that you, he, so you didn't, he, you didn't value him as a husband. So he's tried to be a better husband so that you would, so that he would have more value in your, in your eyes. Mm -hmm. And this is mm -hmm. what you do with the placement of the value. This is crazy to me. This yeah. is really, it, 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 make, it, it makes no sense. So you are actively looking for someone to replace. This is what I want you to hear. Hear me when I say you are looking for someone to replace the man that is doing everything for you. You can't go out there by yourself because you need a replacement for him because he does everything for you. Does that make sense? You are trying to leave the person who does everything for you so much so that you can't leave him early until you have someone come in and do what he does. Why wouldn't you just stay oh with the person who's already doing it? He messed up. So have you. And you are part of the reason why he messed up. Mm -hmm. It would been different if you sent in a letter and said, I ain't do anything wrong. We had a perfect relationship. I never saw this coming. Nothing. No, you said that he told you that you did not value him. He felt like you did not value him as a husband or you were not doing your share, your, your fair share. So he is, he's very open to telling you this is what caused it. Mm -hmm. But even mm -hmm. though these are the things that caused it, he took responsibility for his part and went in to try to fix his part. So you think that you could just hang around and, and and but you've already checked out you you are what he did was not malicious it doesn't sound like it what you are doing is definitely malicious and you put lols in here like it was funny and that's another thing lol has lost its meaning it better have because you better not be laughing out loud right i'm gonna go cheat on my husband <laughs> that's crazy so, no, you're not doing the right thing. No, he no. does not deserve what you're doing. If yeah. you cannot handle it, you should have gotten out of it. You need to get out of it. If you're, if you're so broken that he can't fix it, yeah. you need to chunk up the deuce. It's, it's like that saying, um, the grass is always greener on the other side, but really the grass is always green where you water it. If you want to go and try to find some, another husband, another version of your husband, try thinking about taking care of your husband first. Huh. And if you can take care of your husband first, see if that changes your relationship with him. You're going to lose all kind of people behind this. I want you to know this. The way that you're doing this, if you have genuine people around you, you're yeah. going to lose all kind of people because it's just dirty. Yeah. It's dirty. Yeah. And I don't know what to tell you. And usually things are happy and all that great stuff. But right now, you being foolish, I'm sorry. You are not doing the right thing. I repeat, Ooh. you are not doing the right, pe the right thing. I say it one no. more time. You are not doing the right thing if the right thing was right here you would be over here if the right thing was right in front of your face you would have to take your face off and put it somewhere else because you would not be doing the right thing a mask if a the face. lord told you what the right thing was i don't think you would be able to hear it you would be deaf to his voice i don't you this ain't I, okay yeah mm -mm. Mm -mm. You, you, can, you can't hear the right thing uh-uh you can't spell right mm -mm. L-E-F-T. Right. That's right. And now... Welcome to my soapbox. Uh, I'm gonna get right to it. Hey, somebody owe me some money. Because y'all asked me to type amen, repost, and share certain stuff on Facebook. And if I did that, that Jesus was going to send me some blessings. I was supposed to get some blessings by 12 o'clock one time. And then this other time, I was supposed to get $10 million if I typed amen. And then this one particular time, y'all said if I share a like and typed amen, that a blessing was going to come and I was going to get some money. I have not received any of that stuff. 
Do you understand me? I have not yet any payments for all the shares and likes and amens that I have been contributing into. I have put into the fold. The fold has not paid me anything back. All right. I think I have a problem with that. I really do because my services have not been rendered properly. So for everybody who sends me these messages telling me to do all this extra stuff and that I'm going to get financial reward and you don't give me everything, I'm coming for you. I'm going to start blasting you. I'm going to start putting your name on stuff. I'm going to start adding you. That's right. Everything going to be bold. It's going to be Shaniqua Davis in bold. You did it. I mean, I don't really know who Shaniqua Davis is. So if your name is really Shaniqua Davis, I'm not talking to you, but you get what I'm trying to say. Okay. Thank you. So, as always, I ask that you like, share, and subscribe to this channel. What you may not know is that this is the season finale. Woo! This is it, guys. This is it for this season. This is it for the guests that have been on. I hope you enjoyed them all. For everyone who participated on the show this season, I am grateful for you grateful 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 it is a lot of work to coordinate and get people to sit up here and be foolish with me and I truly appreciate it just so you know the next Susanna says season three is gonna be come closer I'm gonna tell you Susanna says from Europe <gasps> Oh no, it's crazy. I'm filming in Europe. I don't know how it's gonna go. I don't have anything. I just know I'm gonna be in Europe and I'm gonna film it and it's gonna be people and they're gonna have accents. I mean, that's all I know. I, I don't know. I don't know. This is gonna be exciting. Amazing. But until then, I love you, Swiss Army. You have been amazing. Your support means the world. And until next time, I love you. Please look next to you. You have a question for me. I have a